But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit Amen. to have his way. All right. If you would turn with me to the 12th chapter of Romans. Romans chapter 12. I want to ask y'all to pray for our pastor. Pray for him because when he come here this morning, he told me, he said, Real, I know you did the 8 o'clock service. But can you, I'm not feeling well. Can you do the 1045 for me? I told him, Yes. But what I didn't say was, I may not can, but God can. Pray for him because. He prays for us. Amen. Romans chapter 12. Come on, Red. Starting at the 17th verse. And I'll be reading from the King James. Romans chapter 12, verse 14. And it reads Reconcense to no man, evil or evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Mm -hmm. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give peace unto wrath. What is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy is hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap cold of fire upon his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Praise the Lord. If you would pray with me for a few minutes, I would like to talk from this subject. Jesus, we are paying. Jesus will pay. Come on, Red. You know, there are times when people talk about us. Oh, yeah. They run us down. Hallelujah. They smile in our face, and as soon as they get behind our back, mm. it's you a preach whole it right different there. story. All the time they praise you and give you all the accolades mm. when they sit in your face. Yeah. But you know, when they get behind your back, you say they know, or oh, so and so thought he was all of this. But you know what? It's not about us. It's not about us. It's all about God. And God will pay after a while. You don't have to be mean to him, you don't have to strike out to him. You don't have to do anything but keep a smile on your face yeah, yeah. and do good to them. Yeah. They do something. They talk about you. You smile in their face and tell them, God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. I'm going to pray for you, brother. I'm going to pray for you, sister. And not only do you tell them that you're going to pray for them, but you do just what you said. That's right. That's right. Therefore, the Bible said that God will pay Vengeance is his. You know, when God pays it, or when God gets it, fix it for you, mm -hmm. it will be fixed. Yeah, right. Because we can't fix it like God can fix it. Yeah, yeah. You Because we don't have a heaven or a hell yeah, right. to put anybody in. Yeah. But you know what? God has a place for those that mistreat his people. Yeah, right. Because God said that it's not us that he's mistreating, but it's him. Mm -hmm. It's not us that they're rejecting, but it's him. Mm -hmm. But you, in, what, when they talk about you and they mistreat you, you treat them good. That's right. You treat them right. Bible said, treat them like you want to be treated. Because mm -hmm. I, I remember when they asked, asked Jesus, what was the greatest commandment? 
He told him, he said that the greatest commandment is that you love God with all your heart, body, and soul. And the second one was that you love your brothers as yourself. Mm -hmm. You love, you treat them as you want to be treated. Amen. You treat them like not like they treat you, but you treat them as if they were God's chosen ones. Amen. You treat them like they were somebody. You treat them like you would treat the President of the United States if he came to visit you. Because not nobody will mistreat a friend. Nobody is going to look, run, look down their sister or their brother. But you know what? Sometimes it's your sisters and brothers that talk about you behind your back. Yeah, yeah. They'll smile in your face, pat you on the back. But you have to look out for that pat on the back. Because they might be holding something back. They might be holding something back that's not, that, that's not good for you. All the praises they give you is not good for you. That's right. There's a saying that says everything that you like or everything is good is not necessarily good to you. That's right, right. Everything that you like may not be good for you. You know. But what but God is telling us, we'd be, we be good to the people that mistreat us. How do I know you're supposed to be good to the people? When Jesus went to the cross, the first word out of his mouth was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They was getting ready to crucify him. They'd already beat him tortured him, did everything, all manner of evil against him. But his prayer to the Father's Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If he had the courage or if he had the inkling to tell God, ask God to forgive those that were mistreating him, who am I? Who am I? I'm, we, we say we are Christians. Christians Means that you supposed to be Christ like. We supposed to be imitators of Christ. We supposed to be an ambassador in Christ. We supposed to show Christ in us. Because the Bible says that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when they mistreat us, we talk to them, treat them better. We treat them kind. We give them a nice, kind word. If we pat them on the back, we mean. If we tell them we love them, we mean them. If we feed them, give them the best. Don't just go get something that you don't want and give it to them. Bible says, pray for your enemy. Pray for them. Lift him up. I heard Sister Casey this morning say something about a crawfish. Say, well, a crawfish got this, it, 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 he, 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 when some, one of the old prophets start getting to the top, the one down on the bottom reach up and pull him back down. So we don't want to be how that crawfish been telling If somebody get to the top, why not get under the under dirty? Why not lift him up? How about push him up? How about, how about helping him? That about just maybe that you didn't push him up. He'll reach back and pull you up. Treat him kind. Don't treat them like you do. They, they treat you. Don't smile in their face and crush them behind their back. Treat them good. Treat them like you want to be treated. Treat them like they're you. Jesus said, love your brothers like you love yourself. How many in here Actually, who love themselves? How many love themselves? How would you treat yourself? Don't you? To you, you want to. You want the best for you. So therefore, if you want the best for you, you should want the best for your brothers and your sisters. You want them to have just what you have. If you got a nice house, you want them to have a nice house. You have a nice car, you want them to drive a nice car. If you have a nice bank account, you want them to have a nice bank account. That's true. You don't wish no evil, nothing bad for nobody. 
يا عمو هالبي عايز بيعايز وجه منعبه يوم and foolish people do unto me I try to do it unto them I try to treat I try to treat them as bad if not worse than what they treated me but when I was I got in the book the book told me that you out of line son you out of line you supposed to you need to treat that person with kindness they did, they did you me. That don't mean you're going to do me, but God will pay in the end. God will fix it. There's a song that goes by the same child that Jesus will fix it after a while. He said, I don't worry. I'm not worried. But Jesus will fix it after a while. And I live by that same philosophy. Yeah. Jesus will fix it. Yeah. He will fix it for me. Yeah. And I guarantee he'll fix it for you. Yeah. If you just do what he said he's going to do. Yeah. But who are you? You're not important enough that you can beat up on somebody else. Because when you point fingers out there at somebody else, you got that one finger pointing at you, and somebody else will look at him. That's three more pointing back at you. Because when you search them, or you start talking about them, you have to search your heart. Search what's in your heart. How do your heart look? You know, we look at our sisters and brothers from the outside. We look at what kind of clothes they may have on. We look at what kind of diseases they may have. We look at what kind of car they drive. What kind of house they live. What neighborhood they live in. But you know what? God looks upon the heart. What's in the heart? What's in your heart? That's the first thing we ought to ask. Is what's in our heart? When we get up in the morning time, instead of getting up every morning, I ain't telling you no thank God for what he does for you. I don't think I ask you to thank God for the house you live in. Thank you. I don't think I ask you to thank God for the clothes on your back. I don't ask you not to thank God for the food on your table. But I don't ask you to say this right here. You need to ask God, what can I do for you today? What do you have for me to do? What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to do? Who do you want me to do? We need to put it in God's hands. You know, we got to have it. Or we go out and we do what we got to do. And then, if it don't work right, here we go. Back to God. God, you know I did this, that, and up. How you know I did this here? It didn't work out. That's what I was intended to do this here. But why didn't we go to God in the first place? Why do we go to ask God, what do you want us to do about this situation? What is our plan of us? Why do we ask God to focus on this? We make God our second step. Why do I make him first? Because I heard him say, seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. And all, all of these things will be added up. I had a former pastor, my father in the ministry. He had this saying, what comes after all? Nothing comes after all. If you don't put your all into it, you don't have nothing else to give. What comes after all? Nothing. You want to be somebody who blesses you, you've got to be a blessing. If you want to be blessed, bless somebody else. They may not bless you. For God, for Jesus, he will fix it. He will fix it for you. They may run you down. They may talk about you. But every time they talk about you, every time they run you down, I heard somebody say that's a stop in your crime. When you get to jail, when you get to hell, they tell me that's a long white road. They tell me you might have some gold slippers. They tell me you might, you, get, you might get a crime. But you know what? I don't care about getting a crime. I don't care about the long white road. I don't care about the golden slippers. All I care is I get to the door and Jesus said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up, I'll make you ruler over me. Not I don't want to be a ruler. 
I just want to be in his presence. I just want to have a seat at the welcome table. I just want to get to him and say thank you. Thank you all the time I was out there acting crazy. All the damn time I was out there wasn't on your side. You was watching over. You were keeping it. I can put my trust in you when I couldn't trust myself. Jesus will. He will. Fix it. And one thing about it. When Jesus fixes it, it's fixed. It's fixed. There ain't no more. There is no more fixing nothing to it. You don't have to go back and apologize for what you did. Because he sits high and he looks low. He sees as well in the dark as we do in the light. He sees. He knows. He know our innermost thoughts from the far off. Jesus will fix it. All you got to do is put it in his hand. You put it in his hand. And he can. He will take care of it. He will fix it for you. He will. I know that was a time when I was, I used to be a truck driver. I said it like this here. I used to be a truck driver. You know, I was sitting back there with my time, my team driver. I didn't drove my time. I was sitting back there in the back. Asking them, I don't know what it was I was asking God for, what God asked God to do. But there was a question posed to me. What have you done for me lately? You asking me to do all this. But what have you done? For me lately. What have you done? You know, we all we ask God, but we want God to go do a whole lot of things. Some like go go out to the hospital and see about that person is dead or affliction. Go over there and see brother, brother so and so. Go over there and touch sister so and so. But you know what? We are God's ladies. Why is it that we can't go over there? Because when we realize once we get there, God is already there. God will fix it after a while. And you don't have to worry about it, it being fixed. Because he can fix it. And he has a perfect fixation He will fix it. I can't say, you know, I used to get up and I talk when I tell you what mom and dad used to do. Because mom and dad was my first introduction to Jesus. I used to say, mom and dad told me this, that, and nothing. Mom and dad told me that. But you know, one day, I found out from a sin. I found out for myself just how good not that God was, but God is. He will fix it. All you got to do is trust him. All you got to do is put it in his hand. And what I'm trying to tell you, my sister and brother, when you put it in his hand, don't take it out. Don't pick it up and take it with you. You got to leave it there. Jesus will fix it after a while. Come on, choir. Uh, Rub down so that you play Amazing Grace, please. Now, y'all, no, I'm not going to sing. God can give me that gift. I believe if he knew, if he gave me the gift of singing, I might not shut up. But it was God. 
God's amazing grace. That brought us thus far. It was his amazing grace that continued to guide us and keep us. Doors of the church. You can come. Wake up! 